So I'm here on the Big Island and I didn't want to miss this opportunity to bring you the breath from the shores of Kona. So let's activate our breath together and we're going to breathe in love and we're going to exhale aloha. It's the same thing, however, we're going to embody the spirit of aloha in our breath. And we're gonna breathe with beautiful Mother Ocean. All right, are we ready? So let's just take a deep breath in, breathing in love. Exhaling aloha, the sacred breath. Once again, breathing in love. And exhaling, aloha. One final time, taking a deep inhalation in of love, 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 love. And releasing with that sacred breath, aloha. Bring your hands back together to your heart. And feel the resonant beating of your, your heart. And now we're connected through the sacred breath of love and aloha. So I was just told that we were going out for dessert. I thought maybe we were going to be going to Dairy Queen or something. And somehow we ended up here at an RV show. Is that right? How did trickery, that, trickery. How did that happen? Oh, hey, look, look there's we got Dora there's, Lee with us too. There's Dora Lee. You, if you're a regular on Sundays, you've seen her name in the in the comments. That's right. On a pretty regular basis. I don't really know how to type well, so I don't type in a lot. <laughs> that's okay. We see your name there. I'm, the, I'm Keone's godmother. That, that's right. that's right. And also an accomplice in this RV. Yes. thing <laughs> i guess since we're here we'll uh, capture some moments here and share the fun of the rv show <laughs> so these rvs yeah they're kind of like uh, apartments on wheels and so pookie what do you explain to me here here we are we're in the midst of the rv show uh what is the appeal to these what are you what are you hoping to get out of this it's a house on wheels oh my gosh we get to go anywhere and we can come and visit all of our youtube family <laughs> I love the idea of visiting the YouTube family. Yeah, we could the size of this thing. We could have half of them in here. We could. <laughs> so amazing. So I think we're gonna have to downsize, don't you think? From this? Yeah. Oh my goodness, no. No. There's a pink fireplace right there. Everybody needs a pink fireplace. <laughs> That's a factory extra. <laughs> we can make our own pink fireplace. <laughs> you just haven't seen the one that's really gonna get you. Yeah, I'm starting to see it now. Uh, these uh, these RVs, they have all the conveniences of, of home. Plenty of room in the bathroom. Uh, hang, hang on a second. <laughs> There's a shower there. Like plenty of room to stretch out and um, <laughs> and uh, make yourself right at home. I totally see the selling point now. <laughs> oh, well, here's a nice feature. Uh, if you ever want some fresh air uh, while you're using the bathroom, you just open the door to the outside and <laughs> let nature stream in there you go rv show so pookie what are your thoughts on oh my god this one? i'm so in love i want to take one home today come on honey we brought the, the we brought the car <laughs> we, they, they're trying to sell it today i'll drive i'll check, drive check out the um rv for pookie fun and see how much money we got in there see if we have enough money i am losing this battle <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice beige bedroom it doesn't look very colorful. It doesn't speak. Does that say Pookie to me? Oh, baby, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Wait till I get in here. Boy, I'm going to be decorating wait. this place like you just wouldn't believe. It's, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This this needs color? Little... No, this is perfect because then I can just go with any color I want. Any color, any color, any color. Okay. <laughs> oh, look. There's over 100 used low-price fixer-uppers. Makes me want to strap on a tool belt and go to work. <laughs> right, Coralie? Right. <laughs> Tell me again why you picked up these brochures. 
<laughs> for my vision board. For your, for your vision oh, board. Oh, yeah, because, you know, <laughs> are you kidding me? I have another name I, for these it. These are perfect. These are perfect. Another I'm, I'm going to call it your dream on board. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, see how we're making this manifest right now? Look at this. Look it's, at this. Are you kidding me? It's happening right now. Dream on. Look at the windows in this one. That could be a dream on. Wow, look at that. Look at that Babe, one. See, this is the life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. penthouse on wheels. I know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, I'm, I give in. I finally found the RV that I really want. I think this is the one for me. Here it is, right there. Yep, nice price and uh, plenty of room in, in there. Not look, look, Dorley could fit in there. <laughs> Can you see that? It's either this or a U-Haul. What are the other? Perfect for us, isn't it? Are you kidding me? Look at the nice look shelves. At that. We don't even have a kitchen. Look how roomy it is. No, there's no kitchen. There's no oh. bed. There's no bathroom. No, 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 no. Well, howdy. I'm Larry. Come on down to Larry's Trailer Sales. We'll take care of you real quick. All right, Pookie. I think I finally found the most appealing aspect of the whole RV show. Tell me. It's tell right me. here. Right. It's the bar. Oh my gosh. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna need this to survive the rest of this event. No, no, no. <laughs> You can't have a drink until after we leave. Okay, yeah, after we leave. Yeah, there's too many steps. <laughs> exactly. We're not talking about 12 steps either. No, that's a different That's a different topic. All right. What do you got there, Pookie? Oh, I got a KOA bag. Oh, guess what? And look what it says on the back. For your RV. Your. That's like the generic like my, your. No, 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 like no. The every this is for me. Man and no, woman. no, no. For me, for my RV. See, so I got this, right? And, and so this... It's a perfect bag for me to put all of my vision board books in for making my vision board, you know? Yep, uh -huh. All of the different pictures and stuff. And look. Oh my God. I think that bag is the perfect size to put the actual RV in. A toy RV would be no, the perfect thing to purchase. No, look, look, and then they have floor plans and everything. It's just so great. So now, now I can have unlimited pictures of RVs for my vision board. All right, YouTube family, you have created a monster. <laughs> well, we come to the end of a long, grueling day. Oh no, it's been wonderful. It's gone by too fast. Show. I mean, I want to stay longer. I think that there's at least five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten of them that we haven't seen yet. <laughs> at least. So, I don't know what's going to happen in our RV future, but one thing is for sure, oh, we no. definitely want to hit the road and meet you this year and for many years to come. So, Pookie feels it's gonna be in an, an RV. I think, I don't know, we might, maybe we'll hitchhike <laughs> around the country. You're talking about hitting the road without without any home? What, are you crazy, dude? I That's mean, right. like. But if you really wanna rough it, let's go the, all the way. <laughs> yeah, I am okay with that. I'm thinking, so, You're the one that's gonna have the challenges. Right. Well, at least I made it here. You had to trick me into saying we're going to Dairy Queen, but still, I, I accepted it. I'm, I know, I'm opening up to the possibilities. I'm opening up to the good that is my future RV life. <laughs> so, All right. I hope you enjoyed this little journey with us. Hey, but there's a bigger show next week in Kansas City. Let's go. All right, have fun, Pookie. <laughs> See you later. Bye. So I want to share with you how powerful you are in this moment right now in our world. How your heart and the power of your heart to radiate love and compassion into our world right now. It's the most powerful thing that we could ever, ever, ever do. It sometimes gets so overlooked because it's so simple. Loving. Loving another. Loving our brothers and sisters all over the world. Loving our neighbors in our own communities. Loving. How do we love? You know, this is, this is how do we express our love? Well, we did some of that earlier in, this, in our, our session with you today. It's just like bringing that awareness, that attention to our heart. And to sending that love out into the world, that is powerful. When we do it together, it's even more powerful. It's even more amplified, right? And that our love, on like the water, ripples all over the earth. 
And then two, we can look at this water behind me and we can see that this water, this water connects all of the continents on the planet. We're all connected to, see that water right there? That body of water is connected to every, every continent. It's seamless. So when we, when we bring our attention to this water, we're bringing attention to all the water. And so, and then water also um, allows for energy to be moved through water. So when we bring our prayers and our intentions, we bring our love to water. And we offer that to the water. That offering then is carried in the water all over our planet. So if you have the ability to go to water and pray, bring your heart and your intention to the water, you can, those prayers will be amplified in the water. If you can get your feet into the water while you're praying, touch the water in some way and be in a state of gratitude and send your love out into the world right now, out to all our brothers and sisters, everywhere, right? So there is a narrative right now that is creating an illusion of separation, right? And so it's very, very powerful to hold the frequency of love at this time because it eliminates the illusion of separation and it sees all of us as one, as one beautiful divine expression of the creator, whatever you call that, this life force energy that's breathing our bodies and beating our hearts, right? And so when we connect to and we activate this, this center of our being, right? And I'm also bringing to, to awareness to like, pay attention to where the heart is. The heart is in the center of your body. It's right here, right here, right in the center, right? It's not on the right, it's not on the left, it's right in the center, right? because it, it is in that place of non-judgment, of accepting and of loving. That's what love is, love is accepting, right? And so there's this illusion of duality in our world right now, right? This idea that we're not separate or that there are that, there's those and then there's us, this idea, it's not true. It's an illusion, we are one held in the heart of the divine, right? And so, when you're with others, maybe who, who have differing beliefs than you do, right? This can be challenging sometimes to be in environments where people have different beliefs than you have. The challenge is, is not to judge it. The challenge is, is to accept that that is their belief and they get to. They get to believe that. It's their right. It's the freedom that we all have to believe what we believe. So in my freedom to express my beliefs or to live my life based off of my beliefs, others have the right to choose that for themselves, whatever it is, even if it contradicts with what I'm choosing, because I believe that there couldn't be one answer for 7 billion of us on the planet. There's many answers for all of us, and we're all finding our way. But the main thing is, no matter what we're choosing, to stay connected in our hearts right? And to honor and respect our brothers and sisters all over the world as they too are facing some challenging choices, right? That we're making right now in the world. So how is it that we can walk the middle path? How is it that we can walk the path of love? As we see this, this duality, this illusion of duality emerging, right? We come back to ourselves and we exercise our love and our compassion in the world. We embrace and we accept people for who they are and not judging. Right? So that is the path of love. So I love this Rumi quote, and I know I don't have it right, but you'll get the gist of it, and maybe you know it, and if you do, post it in the chat. 
you know, that beyond, uh, beyond the field, uh, beyond right doing and wrong doing, okay, or let's just say beyond black and white, left or right, there is a field, there is a field beyond that, beyond right doing and wrong doing. There is a field, and in that field, I will meet you there. In that field, beyond judgment, in the field of love and of compassion. So allow your water essence to ripple love into the world. You don't have to go to a water body. You are a water body. Although it, it, it you know, there's something that about ritual or about ceremony when we bring it to a moment with our intention, right, of going to the water. Maybe you can bring some others to the water. You know, but here right now in this moment, no matter where you are, we're activated right now in this moment to shine our light and our love into the world because that's what the world needs right now. The world doesn't need judging and blaming and finger pointing. The world needs love, love. And there's enough of us that we can, we can do it. We can love the world. We can love the world enough. We can. That's why we're here. Right? That's why we're here. We're remembering who we are. We're remembering why we're here. Sound familiar? We're remembering why we came. And we're remembering that we are love. That we are love. All right, so let's just send a little blast of love into our planet again. And maybe you want to bring this into your daily practice of just loving all of our brothers and sisters all around the world. regardless of the challenges that they're facing, sending our love and our compassion to all, all of our brothers and sisters everywhere. Hmm. Love you, love you, love you. Keep loving the world. Keep doing it. Do it. It's powerful. It's going to change everything. You watch. I promise. Okay, so check out what Kayoni likes to do. We come out to this open area, this common ground in our neighborhood where it's a lot, a lot of space. There's no distractions or other dogs. He's been on the leash to this point. So watch what happens when I do this. Ready, Kayoni? Run! Run! Come here. Kayoni, come here, run! Come back. There you go. Look at him just take off. He loves it. Run! <laughs> it's a great way uh, for him to get out here and get some exercise. He goes crazy. Even though I didn't bring any treats with me, this is something uh, he's getting better at too. Okay, honey, heel, sit, stay. Stay right there. Stay. You're free. Come here. Good boy. It's <laughs> running again. So this is a song that my mother wrote early on to help newcomers to hula learn the hula in an easy way. And so she wrote this song. So I'm going to dance it for you now. And she'll be delighted that I did this today. All right. Okay, ready? Here we go. Yeah.
let's make it up, let's hula. Local boys, big and strong. Hula girls in cute sarongs. All hula in the real Hawaii way. In the real Hawaii way. <laughs> Was that beautiful or what? <laughs> that is the authentic hula dance in there. All right, so did you, could you tell what I was saying with my hands? Like, could you see, like, when I made the tree and the ocean waves, right, and the moon and the sun, all those things, right? So hula is a beautiful way for women to experience themselves, you know, in grace and beauty. Hey, it's Bob here, and I just wanted to shoot a quick video to talk about something that I'm calling uh, the secret to instant manifestation. Ooh, that's a pretty tantalizing title, isn't it? The secret to instant manifestation. So first of all, let's define manifestation. Uh, the way that I'm uh, using it this is when you have an idea uh, for something either that you want to acquire or that you want to create and then you take action or something takes place and then the thing becomes a reality. So it could be that you want to get a new car or you want to write a book or whatever and then the thing happens. You actually buy the car that you want. You find yourself on stage at that venue, whatever it is. So it's basically you take an idea and then it becomes reality. This is the way all everything, every man-made or human-made object is created, how every creative uh, endeavor comes to fruition. It's an idea, usually there's some sort of an action, and then it materializes. So instant manifestation, that means that right away you get that thing that you want. Now you can think of this in terms of, oh, I'd like to make $10,000, and then two seconds later, there it is. It's in your hands or in your bank account or the car just magically materializes. I'm not quite talking about that. So what do I mean by instant manifestation? To explain this, I'm going to talk about something uh, that I teach when I, uh, when I talk about marketing, which I've been talking about music marketing and just marketing in general for a couple of decades now. And one of the things I always tell people that are taking my classes or reading my books, I hope you can hear the birds in the background. It's a beautiful day here in St. Louis. But anyway, when someone buys something from you, when people spend money on anything, um, they are not actually interested in purchasing the thing itself. I mean, they are, they want that thing, but the thing that motivates people to spend money on anything is they anticipate how owning that thing will make them feel. That's right. They anticipate how acquiring that thing will make them feel. They want to buy your music album because they anticipate how playing it later is going to make them feel. And so from a marketing perspective, I, I teach that because I encourage people to focus on that feeling, that end result that people actually want, but that emotional payoff that they get from acquiring this thing. How does that tie into manifestation? Well, here it is. When you want something, when you have a desire to either create something or acquire something like a car or a certain amount of money or a job or a lover or whatever it is, I mean, yes, you want that thing. You want it to show up in your life. But more importantly, in a very deep, profound, level you anticipate you have a desire for the feeling that that thing is going to give you and let's just take a real common one money I mean let's say you're in debt or you got some bills to pay or there's something that you want to acquire and boy it'd be great if you had five thousand or ten thousand dollars immediately available to you how would that make you feel it would probably make you feel secure or content or maybe the pressure's off that you'd be calm and confident so whatever that thing is that you're desiring that's eluding you that doesn't exist in the real world yet ask yourself how will acquiring that thing make me feel what am i drawn to what's the real reason that i want to acquire or create that thing identify what that is and then yes you can actually choose to give yourself that feeling right now I know it's not the same thing as actually having it. But let's say that you want to feel secure, calm, and confident. Think back to the last time you felt that way. You have felt that way in the past. Just imagine what it 
felt like and what it would feel like to feel calm, to feel confident, to feel secure. Just close your eyes, do a little meditation, whatever you have to do, and just choose to feel that way in this moment. Yes, you can have that feeling right now instantaneously if you choose to. And I know it's not the same as actually having the money, your bills still need to be paid or whatever that thing is that you want. But here's the thing. If you can train yourself to feel that payoff feeling in this moment right away without having acquired it, just imagine if you are operating from a sense of confidence, security, of calmness, and I have got this covered, I don't have any burden on me from that space of feeling that way, you can actually are in a better position to then take action in the real world to create that thing or acquire that thing or earn that money or attract that lover or whatever it is. So there's some very down to earth practical ways of applying this. So that's what I mean by instant uh, manifestation. Identify that end feeling result that you want from the thing that you are desiring. What is the end payoff emotionally feeling wise for you? Can you take yourself to a place where you feel that right Right now, you don't need that thing. You can actually use the power of your mind and your imagination to actually feel that way right now. And from that more positive psychological perspective, you'll be in a better place to actually take action in the real world, put your feet on the ground, and make that thing happen. Does that make sense? I hope this was helpful. So subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Leave a comment here to let me know your own perspective on this instant manifestation thing. Are you ready to stop the struggle and regain control of your life? Are you ready to find hope, confidence, clarity, peace, and a sense of empowerment? I want to remind you to take a look at the new Personal Transformation Matrix program I created with my wife, Pookie Lee. This powerful three-step process is designed to give you quick results to easily fit into your busy schedule and to create lasting change that will have your friends and family asking, what happened to you? I've never seen you so energized. Learn more and register at bobbakerinspiration.com. So right now, it's, since this is so different, it's not going to be Bob's Comedy Corner. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Community Comedy, Comedy Corner. Corner. Yeah. <laughs> it's a doobie wow, wild. That's great. All right. So July seventeenth. That's the that's t uh, today's date. I always like to see if there's something that inspires me that happened in history. And on this date in 1902, American mechanical engineer Willis Carrier completed drawings for what would become the first modern air conditioner, which I thought was very timely because yesterday was one of the. High it set a record in St. Louis for that date. Like it's like 102, 103 is what it got up to. So. Uh, I thought what a perfect thing to do is it's so hot jokes <laughs> it's so one at a time just come up here all right Cherie go it's for it so hot out I saw a fire hydrant chasing a dog <laughs> ah, yeah. that's right so you're on live laugh track come on yeah okay hey Bob you know it's so hot you need a spatula to remove to do what <laughs> Let's try it again. How hot is it, Samantha? I don't get it. Oh, no, I do. Bob, it is so hot. You need a spatula to remove your clothing. Yay! <laughs> okay. Oh, he's got to memorize. It's, uh, it's pretty hot out, Jacob. Yeah. yeah, it's so hot. I saw a chicken lay an omelet. Oh, wow. wow. That was great delivery. Great. <sighs> you guys, it's so hot out. How hot is it, Dorley? You know, the birds are using oven mitts to pull the worms out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> one, one. It's so hot, my thermometer goes up and says, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My thermometer goes up to you, are you kidding me? All right, come on now. All right, Karen. Oh, awesome. It's so hot, even the artificial flowers are dying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's so hot, you can wash your clothes and dry them at the same time. Oh, wow. That was good delivery. Oh, she's got it memorized. It is so hot out. I poured McDonald's coffee in my lab just to cool off. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, 
love this. This one's in honor of my Virginians out there. It is so hot, even the white collar workers are rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hot, the cows are producing evaporated milk. <laughs> All right, here See, we go. It's so hot outside, the ice cream man just changed his the sign on his van to read just cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hot, I saw a guy with a sign that read, we'll work for shade. <laughs> And I think that's it. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end it like we started it. So this has been the Community Comedy, Comedy Corner. What a great message! Wow, we have the power. We in within our own being, we have the power to transform this world. Don't forget that you are powerful. You are significant. You matter. Ooh. Never more than now, baby. I'm telling you, love is, I mean, we just gotta keep on loving people. Just keep on loving people. Don't even, it doesn't even matter. Like this whole divide thing. It's love, 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 love. Did you just say the word love? What are we gonna do? We're gonna sing about Wow, it ties right into this next song. Here's an oldie but goodie. This is one of the first original songs that Pookie and I collaborated on a long time ago. You may have heard it before. Yeah, dark hair then. You're gonna hear it again. Woke up this morning, something wasn't right. My life was out of balance, I couldn't see the light. I called up my minister, told her of my dread. Without missing one beat, well, this is what she said Love is the word. 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 You got the word now, right? You know what the word is, right? <laughs> well, I went to the doctor, cause I was feeling bad. Sickness all inside me, I thought I was going mad. I asked for a prescription, he handed me a note. I was so surprised to see you just what that doctor wrote. Love is the word. 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 L O V E is the W O R D. L-O-V-E is the W-O-R-D. Say that. Love, love, love. Is the W-O-R-D. L-O-V-E is the W-O-R-D. When I went to a psychic to have my fortune told, to see into the future and how it will unfold. But she just shook her head, put away her tarot cards, looked me in the eye and said, Man, it ain't that hard. Love is the word. 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 I'm talking about love. Love is the word. Love, 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 love. love is the word. I'm talking about love. Love is the word. Love is the word. I'm talking about love. Love is the word. Love is the word. I'm talking about love. Love is the word. That's it. Thank That's you. all you need to know. That's it. That's the only thing you need to know. Love, love, love is the word. Thank you, Pookie and Bob. What's, oh, that's so fun. I love that song. Didn't you, didn't you write that about 10 years ago? It may be longer. Wow. Oh, it's our time together again. Wow. It's always so good to be here with you. Such a beautiful love, such a beautiful light, right? 
We're here to shine that light in the world. So I want to talk about <laughs> something that, you know, it really took me a long time to get this because I, for a long time in my life, I thought that I was a mistake, you know, um, that I, that there was, there was a, there was something wrong with me. <laughs> but I really did believe this. I mean, it's honest to God true. I thought there was something wrong with me and I needed to be fixed, right? And, and so I spent a lot of my 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, right? And it was just an evolving journey of just trying to figure it out for myself. Like, what was it? What was it about me that wasn't right, right? Well, the honest to God's truth is that there was nothing about me that wasn't right. The only thing that I had was I had some really kind of screwy ideas about who I thought I was. And I believed some lies about myself that had been given to me by, you know, really well-intending people like my parents and my mother, because I didn't know my dad, my mom, or, you know, um, family members, uh, let's see, teach school teachers, you know, things like that, adults, right, as I was growing up. And they kind of they kind of told me some lies that weren't really true about who I was, right? Because they really couldn't see it in themselves. So it's really hard to see in another person what you don't possess yourself, right? And so if, the, if you can't see, if they couldn't see their own divinity, how could they possibly see mine, right? And then also to, you know, it just kind of, that just goes on and on and on. Like my mother had problems with her own self-esteem and her own self-value and who, who she thought she was. And she had been believing lies from my mother, from my grandmother, right? So you can see how this baton just continues to get passed down, passed down, passed down, right? But then I came to, in this deep search to figure out what was wrong with me or wh how, how I could fix myself, I came across this idea I don't even remember where it came from, where I began to embrace the idea that, wow, I never made a mistake. I never made a mistake out of every everything that I'd ever done, because I used to judge myself harshly. And uh, and I, I, could, I could give you a list of these times when I'd make, made mistakes, where I felt like I'd made a mistake, or made the wrong choice, or I did the wrong thing, or whatever. But I came into this belief or this understanding that I never made a mistake. Never, never, never did I make a mistake. What I made was I made some choices that gave me an outcome that I wasn't expecting, right? It wasn't a mistake. There was nothing wrong with the choice that I'd made. Only thing that was that was challenging was that it wasn't what I it wasn't the outcome that I was looking for right so once I began to look at all of the things in my life as not making not mistakes just outcomes that I hadn't desired right so what it was teaching me was that if I wanted this and I and I took an action like this and it didn't it didn't achieve my goal it wasn't a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. I just took an action that created a different outcome than what I was looking for. So then what do you do? You find another action. You take another action and you do that in order to get the outcome that you're looking for. Now, sometimes you might make it, you might choose something and you get an outcome that you're not expecting, but oh my gosh, it's so much better than what you were expecting. You just have no idea. Right, you have no idea. So I know that I've never made a mistake. I've made choices that didn't turn out the way that I had intended. But they weren't mistakes. And then when I look back on those experiences, those were huge lessons for me. I learned so much. I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about others. And I learned so much about the world, right? In making these choices over and over again, right? And so I never made a mistake. And this kind of goes back to this idea that everything is always perfect. 
every choice that we're making empowers us in in one way or another right we're we're empowered to grow more to learn more to understand more maybe we're empowered to um be more creative or figure it out like find another way find another mechanism to achieve the outcome that we're looking for not mistakes just actions that created outcomes we weren't expecting and is that all perfect yes because in all of those outcomes i learned like i said so much about myself and so much about others so how would your life be different if you fully embrace this idea of i've never made a mistake oh and you can never ever make a mistake that's a that's a liberating thought you know if you have this idea like i can never make a mistake what will that do for you well one thing that i noticed for me once i started adopting this way of being in the world i started noticing that i would make i would make choices a lot faster and then the choice that i'd make if it didn't create the outcome that i wanted well then i would just make another choice i would just make another choice i would continue to learn from every choice that i was making therefore i was continuing to grow and evolve and strengthen my um my muscle as far as like creating becoming a creator of that which i'm wanting to experience and learning along the way all the ways in which it doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> now some people get really frustrated at that. But if you believe that you've never made a mistake and if you believe that everything is perfect, you don't get frustrated with that. You just don't. Because you know, oh no, this is perfect. This is here to teach me a lesson. I'm learning. Sometimes um I I will have this experience where I'm just supposed to be watching something. I'm not even supposed to be responding to it. I'm just supposed to be watching it because there's something that's there for me to learn. There've been a couple of times recently where I've been sitting with family members, right? And I have like advice that I want to give or I'm, you know, I'm going to point to something. And um and spirit, my inner wisdom, my inner guidance, cuz that's what I listen to. My inner guidance is telling me, mm, "No, no, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't. Mm, quiet, quiet, quiet. Just watch. Just watch cuz I want to show you something." Right? And so sometimes we just get to be a witness to things as they're occurring. Sometimes you'll get to be a witness to a choice that you're making in the way that it's unfolding, and the only thing that you can do is just witness your outcome. Right? So, I love this idea of we never make a mistake ever. We never will and we never can. So, that will give you confidence in making choices in the future you won't sit and go oh well should i do this or should i do that or maybe i should do this or this or what about that or this oh i just don't know which one let me call susan and ask her what she thinks and maybe she can help me in or oh well maybe there's a you know no 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 all you have to do is just make a choice i like i like this idea of like writing down let's just say 20 different ways in which it could be done if you're up against something and you're looking at doing something 20 different ways in which it could be done. So write it all out, right? And then out of that list of 20, pick one and then do that. And then pay attention to what happened. And then if you didn't get the outcome that you were looking for, pay attention to what the lesson is that you can learn. What can I learn from this experience because we're never wasting our energy. Our energy is always engaged, right? We can ignore our lessons. We can ignore or turn away from that which is showing up for us in a moment or we can get really angry and mad at it. We can have all kinds of of emotions about it. But or we can choose to look at it and embrace it in a new way. Like become curious. <laughs> right? And so if that first one doesn't work, doesn't get the outcome that you're looking for, go back to your list and pick another one and do that one. And what will that one? Well, if that one doesn't do it, pay attention to the lesson because there's something really amazing there for you too. Right? And then continue to do this until you like sometimes you get these really wonderful surprises where you get an outcome that's so much bigger and grander than anything that you could have anticipated. It's like, "Wow!" and like totally sends your whole your whole plan off onto a new trajectory. And I've had this happen many times. You know how that happens? It happens when you're not attached to the outcome. 
where you don't get like, oh man, this didn't turn out the way that I wanted. Can you look at what showed up and see how maybe this could be even a better blessing, an even bigger blessing, an even greater gift, right? Because this is how we, we, we get to play in the world like this. Never making a mistake and everything is perfect. Everything is perfect. We don't have to worry about how things are unfolding or judging what's happening. That's the other thing that you get liberated from too, is you get liberated from your judgment, the judgment of yourself, the judgment of others. Because if it's all perfect, what is there to judge, right? If you can never make a mistake, what is there to judge? There's nothing to judge. And in reality, there it is nothing to judge. Everything is just happening. It's just all occurring in its own unfoldment, its own evolution. So you're having your own personal evolution, but we're having an, we're having a collective evolution as, as a, as, as, as a global family, right? All of us are, are evolving together on this beautiful planet, right? As we're evolving individually. And so how is it that you can walk in the world and you can be liberated and feel lighter, right? And release yourself from judgment, from judgment of what's happening, from judgment of yourself, from judgment of what's going on in the world, judgment about how things aren't showing up the way that you expect them to. Just release all that, just let it go, let it go, let it go. And what you'll find is you'll find such sweet liberation. You will find freedom there. So let's just play with this. Let's just play with this idea. I can never make a mistake. And I know it's a hard one to swallow, you know, because we want to judge ourselves. We look for excuses to not be successful or to not get what we want. You know, we try to say things like, oh, I don't deserve it or I'm not good enough or I never, I can't trust myself. I never make the right decision. I, that's not true. It's not true. There's no right or wrong. Everything just is. So you make a decision. It doesn't turn out how you want it. Oh, well. Hey, did it turn out better than what you were expecting? What is there? What's there for you to embrace? Right. And if not, then just go back to the drawing board again and pick another thing off your list and do that. Right. And then see how if playing in this realm of it's all perfect, I can never make a mistake. See how that will transform your day in a magnificent, wonderful way. Yeah. Hmm. I would love to have you commit to one day of just being in perfection, being in the, I can't make a mistake, and just see how it feels. All right. So much love for you and everything that you do. Mm, so great. And just remember, everything's perfect and you cannot make a mistake. Mm, and you're perfect too. I love you. I love you. I love you. Have an amazing day and celebrate this beautiful Sunday. Mm, aloha. Breathing in, breathing out. I feel alive, I feel alive. I'm so alive. I feel alive.
feel my body, I feel my heartbeat. 